three months ago, I started following a carnivore diet to learn how it affects my strength, stamina, appearance, endurance, body composition, muscle size, blood markers, metabolic rate, personality, intelligence, and productivity. I thought the hardest part about following this diet was going to be fighting off the temptations of all the food that I want to eat, or avoiding the health complications that everybody seems to be warning me about. But life has some plans of its own. We put in place the first federally mandated quarantine in over 50 years. As of midnight tonight, all non-essential businesses will shut down. One of the many sectors hit by this pandemic is meat processing. As employees and plants test positive, some are closing, and that's affecting supply lines, especially for pork and beef. Despite all of these challenges and more, I actually made it 90 days. And thanks to True Local for delivering meat directly to my door, I didn't cheat even one time. But with the government mandating that all the businesses providing my health diagnostics shut down, I have to postpone the final health test. Good. More time to test the diet. I also was never planning on releasing weekly update videos, but with the social distancing preventing me from working with the camera crew, I had to adjust the approach. Good, now we can review my experience and see if we can address the problems or amplify the benefits by reintroducing animal products. Plans for the future can wait to the end of this video because despite having to postpone all the professional tests, there are some other tests that I've been conducting which we can review today. My biggest concern with the carnivore diet was that it was going to make me weaker, especially at higher rep ranges. Fortunately, we captured how many dips and pull-ups I could do before starting the diet, and I found some outdoor spots where I could continue working out while the gyms are closed. My dips went from 33 reps to 32 reps, while my pull-ups remained stable at 23 reps. The stagnation is not too encouraging because losing weight and shifting my focus from a weightlifting program to lifting my own weight should probably increase my reps. But it's also not too concerning because I am improving at the new exercises I'm doing. I went from barely being able to do a pistol squat and not being able to do a muscle up to four muscle ups and 13 pistol squats in just seven weeks. These improvements don't mean that the carnivore diet is making me stronger. Most people who try any new exercise on any any diet will see some improvements, but it is giving me confidence that the carnivore diet isn't impairing my strength, unlike its effects on my stamina. I went for my first run five weeks into the carnivore diet and the final run at the end of week 13, and my time on the same route increased by 34 seconds. The app that I'm using to track my runs is showing different distances on both of these days, but I ran the exact same route and the time was almost the same, so we can call this a wash, which isn't great. With the gyms being closed, I've been doing more running on this carnivore diet than I have at any other point in my life and there really isn't even a close second so I was expecting to see some improvements. Maybe it's from doing too much biking too close to the final run or maybe it's from the crippling leg cramps that I'm experiencing. We won't know for sure until I control for some of the variables in my final VO2 max test so for now I'm curious if we can find any indication of what might be happening through my blood tests. And my red blood cells, the ones responsible for carrying oxygen through your body, fell 6% from 4.65 to 4.4 million per cubic millimeter. However, my free and total testosterone increased 19 and 39% respectively, which might not sound surprising to you, but the last time I went on a carnivore diet, my testosterone fell by 22% in just three weeks. I don't know what the difference is this time, but I do know that the biggest concern people have been throwing my way besides scurvy is how it's going to affect my heart health. My LDL cholesterol rose by 17%, while my HDL fell by 11%. There is a new debate over whether cholesterol is as bad as we once thought it was, and I'm far from an expert in comprehending the results of blood tests. Variations between the first and second values might fall within a normal margin of error, which is why I want to film the doctor reviewing the results with me, but since that's not possible, we'll have to postpone this till the end of quarantine. I'll monitor my blood to see if these trajectories continue, but if you guys wanna see a detailed breakdown of my blood results before the end of quarantine, then send an email to Dr. Paul Saladino and let him know about the experiment and that you'd like him to help me review my blood test results. Then I can make a follow-up video explaining all of this in detail. You can find Dr. Saladino's email in the description below this video. Despite the massive increase in fat consumption, I still appear to be losing fat. The DEXA scan shows me weighing 92.2 kilograms or 202.8 pounds before starting the diet and my scale seems to agree. I started the diet at 11.5% body fat and lost 14 pounds within the first month where my weight has remained relatively stable ever since. The exception is after two months where I started eliminating coffee, eggs, and every animal product that wasn't beef, 
and my weight started temporarily increasing. I'm not sure if I started eating more food as a coping mechanism, or if I wasn't getting enough nutrients so my appetite was increasing, or if my metabolism was just slowing down. I won't know for sure until the second half of this experiment when I start reintroducing foods, so subscribe if you want to find out. The only thing compelling me more towards a carnivore diet than the fat loss and aesthetic gains are the cognitive benefits it's reported to provide. While my productivity was increasing when I first went carnivore, it started declining over the past three weeks. The declining productivity started around the time when I eliminated coffee and all the other meat products, so it might be the result of not having caffeine or from draining my willpower trying to adhere to all the new restrictions. But it might also also come from a waning enthusiasm about this diet, working for three straight months with no food as an incentive or reward. With the first 90 days of the carnivore diet complete, there's still a lot of questions to answer. Now we can review my experience and learn if we can address the problems or amplify the benefits by reintroducing different animal products. For that, there's still one food that I need to eliminate, which is why next week's mission is to fast for five days, eliminating all foods from my diet before building it up from the foundation, finding the optimal foods for achieving each goal. I'll study the nutritional profile of each food and share the results of its effects on me. If the food hurts, I'll cut it. If it helps, I'll keep it. You can even vote on what I try next. I started this channel over five years ago because I wanted to evaluate different diets and workout programs one variable at a time. And this carnivore diet is finally providing me with that ability. But there's still one major obstacle in the way. I budgeted for three months of this experiment, and with the time now up, I need to find alternative options. If you want to see the continuation of this experiment, then you can support the channel through the link to the Patreon page in the description below this video. You can receive a variety of benefits from showing your support, like voting on the next food that I try, joining an instant messaging community, accessing the full-length daily video journals that I've been taking throughout this entire experiment, and more. I initially had a list of more than 30 videos I was planning to create before this pandemic, your support will help create these videos with new insights from the first 90 days of this experiment. And don't worry if you can't afford to show support. Your views, likes, and comments are more than enough motivation to keep me going, despite any challenges that I'll encounter. So the plan moving forward is to start fasting before reintroducing foods one at a time while editing the initial diagnostic videos that I performed and releasing them to you guys so you can see what types of tests I'm doing. I haven't been able to edit these yet because my computer's not powerful enough and with social distancing, I haven't been able to access the better computer that I need. But now that, that seems to be coming to an end, keep an eye out for those soon. And if you wanna see any of this content and more, then subscribe to this channel. Thank you all for watching and I'm excited to continue sharing this journey with all of you.